Okay, let's be real. The ending of Bayonetta 3 is vague. Like, really vague. Depending on your interpretation, everyone died or no one died. As showcased by my previous videos, I tend to believe the latter, and most of the people who watched tended to agree with my reasoning. Thankfully, Bayonetta Origins made strides in explaining a lot of unexplained aspects of Bayonetta 3, and I'm stoked to say it even provided further proof for our interpretation of Bayonetta 3's ending. The secret chapter unlocked after completing the main campaign is where most of our Bayonetta 3 explanations come from. And if I'm a fanboy for a second, I just want to say it was awesome! Before we get into specifics, I have some lingo for you guys so you can keep up while you watch. Bayonetta 3's Cereza will be referred to as Arc Cereza, and Arc will also be used to refer to her timeline and other characters from her timeline. The Bayonetta variants from 1 and 2 will be referred to as the Trinity Bayonettas, as together with Arc Cereza, they complete the Triple Goddess symbol. Any variants of other characters from their timelines will also be referred to as Trinity variants. As these three timelines are so close together in the multiverse, I want to make it clear that this origin story seems to be mostly the same for all of them, and other closely related variants too, such as the ones from the Records of Time, and even Viola's mother. They've all likely gone through mostly the same story here. However, this secret chapter from Bayonetta Origins seems to only affect the Arc timeline, aka the Bayonetta we play as in Bayonetta 3, as Singularity specifically calls her Arc Eve Origin in both games, and Jean's death vision mimics the way Arc Jean dies. With our lingo settled, and an agreement on what timelines are affected by this origin story, Let's finally discuss what happened in the secret chapter. The biggest shocker comes right away, with the most unexpected guest making an appearance. None other than Singularity. Yeah, everyone's favorite genocidal maniac who wrecked the entire multiverse in Bayonetta 3, and was the cause of all of our pain and suffering in that game. At the end of Bayo 3, Singularity admitted that Arc Cereza was an anomaly he miscalculated in his plans. After all, she was the only variant who challenged him with the Deadly Sin incantation, an extra powerful spell she cast by invoking the Third Circle of Hell to accomplish summons not yet seen in the Realm of Chaos. Against his plans, Arc Cereza succeeds in delivering the killing blow after having teamed up with Viola, Luca, and even the Trinity variants from 1 and 2. Now, in Bayonetta Origins, his contingency plan is revealed. It turns out, after the events of Bayonetta 3, he wants to go back to the source and wipe out Arc Cereza at an early age so he can accomplish his plans without Arc Cereza ruining them. <laughs> He's such a sore loser. Unfortunately for him, because of the events of Bayo 3, he's in a severely weakened state, and is only able to summon fairy illusions to take the form of Cereza's fears. He knows this, so sensing Jean's approach, he turns his tactics to attempted persuasion, kindly asking her to leave him alone by showing her visions of her death in the future. His pleas are in vain, and Jean persists to defeat him with the help of Cheshire and even Cereza as she breaks out of her containment. Jean states that she accepts her fate and will face it without remorse. So, already, on its face, this doesn't seem to amount to much. After all, this doesn't change the fact that she'll be killed in the future, right? So, why is this so important? Well, this is gonna sound a little bleak for a bit here, just bear with me, there's good news, I promise. But there are several factors that change our perspective of what happened in Bayonetta 3. For starters, this explains so much better why Jean allows herself to be stabbed. It's not that this occurrence in Origins creates a new timeline, or that she was actually soul projecting for the entirety of 3, the latter of which wouldn't make sense or matter anyways since we see her body shatter and her soul get absorbed. No, no. It's that she knew she needed to let it happen so Cereza could secure her victory in the future. Sure, she could have avoided her own death and tried to help Cereza in the final fight, but taking the spear to her heart was the path she knew with 100% certainty would lead to success. This may have gone over every single one of our heads at the time, but think back to all her lines during her death scene. Go, Cereza. You're the only one who can end this. Cereza will return. 
Upon re-watching After Origins, it becomes clear with her words and delivery that she knows Cereza will stop Singularity, and it seems like she knows that her own end is coming soon as well. She's even wearing the same outfit that she saw in her vision long ago. Like, there's no way she hadn't already accepted this right before it happened. Then I'll leave this lot to you. Promise I'll be back in time for drinks, alright? But I told you I have good news, right? Yeah, I, and I mean it. <laughs> Luckily for Jean, even with accepting her fate, it seems she didn't die for good after all. Many of you have probably seen my breakdown of the ending of Bayonetta 3, where I reveal through the game's subtle visuals that all the universes were revived along with their respective Bayonettas and Johns, because Arc Cereza figured out how to use Singularity's black hole properties to bring them back. Singularity even admits it out loud when he sees Bayonetta 1 and 2 during the final fight, and we also see Arc Enzo talking to Ed and Edna over the phone, even after they were confirmed to have died during the beginning of the game. Some people still didn't believe the good news, but Bayonetta Origins gives even more confirmation. You see, in Origins, Jean showcases the ability of Soul Projection, which visually takes the same effect that the revived Bayos and Jeans used in Bayonetta 3 when Arc Cereza frees them from Singularity's body. Speaking of body, at the end of the secret chapter, the narrator explains that Jean's soul projection was running out and her soul yearned to return to her body. The effect we see this take is the same as we see on Jean and the Trinity Bayos when they finish what needed to be done. This was simply their souls returning to their revived bodies. Now, some might say that their souls don't need bodies to be floating around and fighting like this. However, we have seen examples of dead souls in the Bayonetta series before. The death state renders the souls almost completely immobile. It takes the shape of the body, but with no detail. Just a translucent, purple shape. Only providing clothing if the title isn't rated M. And for witches, Hands from Inferno appear to drag you to hell pretty much immediately. If these Bayos and Jeans were actually dead, their souls would look more like Trinity Jeans, Arc Cerezas, and even Morganas did when they were killed, with infernal arms clamoring to drag their souls to hell at every continuing moment, and an inability to move their souls around much at all. Instead, they look exactly as they did before death, clothing, details, and all. Speaking without a death state audio filter, able to fight just as well as they did when they were alive, and no infernal hands in sight to drag them down. Soul Projection also explains why the Trinity Bayos were able to fuse and perform the Trinity Masquerade. It was because Bayonetta 1 and 2 were soul projecting, while 3 was not, allowing them to enter her body and strengthen her further. With these three timelines being so close in the multiverse, this fusion was also probably made even more possible thanks to the three of them being alike in mind and, well, soul. <laughs> because of Singularity's body containing black hole properties, Arc Cereza was able to use it to warp time space and reverse his phenomena, aka revive all the destroyed universes along with all life that perished during his invasions. She was also able to deal a finishing blow in the end, and when Singularity attempts a last-ditch effort to stop his demise in the future by going to the past, Jean's choice to willingly accept her fate secures a similar end to Singularity as that of Lopter in Bayonetta 1 and 2. Trapped endlessly in a loop of time, with no way to break out as the events have now reached full circle. The unfortunate circumstance of Arc Cereza being the only one to perish as a result of saving the multiverse is tragic, for sure. But where is her soul, really? After all, there's a familiar blue light emanating from Luca on their way down to hell. Let's just say, portions of Bayonetta 3 and Origins also give insight to this as well. So keep an eye out for a video explaining that soon. In the meantime, in case you missed it, go back and watch my full breakdown of Bayonetta 3's ending and how we know, exactly, that it wasn't the bleak ending everyone thought it was. <laughs>